Can you hear the wind outside? It is howling right now. Okay, hopefully that doesn't distract us from doing this very important video today, which is we're in the month of May. So we are talking about traits of successful care blazers, traits of successful dementia caregivers. That's our whole focus in the month of May. And I have one of the most important videos I think I can give. And what I wanna say is I am not here to just give information. That's not something I'm interested in. I am here to help give information that will transform, that will lead to transformation. I wanna do a video on being average being an average caregiver. Now, let that sink in. What do you think about when you think of the average caregiver? I don't even have to think about a specific person. I can go straight to what the research shows me, and the research will tell me that the average dementia caregiver has a 68% higher mortality rate compared to non-caregivers, 64% of them have anxiety, 40% of them experience loneliness, over 60% of them have trouble with sleep. The stats are not good when it comes to the average dementia caregiver. So I am willing to bet you don't want to be average. In fact, I hope you don't want to be average. But when we use the word average, what does that mean? Average is where most of the people are. So in reality, the majority of dementia caregivers are average. And that's not a negative thing. I don't mean that as a negative connotation at all. I just mean the number of people who are dementia caregivers who are experiencing the negative side effects of loneliness, depression, health consequences, sleep difficulties, anxiety, the number is quite big. Most dementia caregivers experience those things. But this is a series on traits of super successful caregivers. So super successful caregivers, while they might experience some of those natural human emotions that we would all experience going through life, they also have a much more happiness and joy and peace. How do we get there? So we know that the average caregiver, that's the majority of caregivers. So the majority of dementia caregivers are experiencing a lot of negative side effects that most people don't want to, but they continue to. What about this group over here, this much smaller group because they're not average. They're not ordinary. They're extraordinary. They're doing things differently. What are they doing differently? Let's talk about it. One of the things they're doing differently is they are not spending all of their time focused on the injustices, the unfairness, and the frustrations, and all of the shoulda, woulda, coulda's of caregiving. They might spend some time there, but the key is they're spending just as much time in this possibility of what can I control? Where is my power? What can I change? What can I do? A lot of people spend a lot of time in the dementia caregiving world complaining, and it makes sense because there are so many hardships and so many difficulties. Let me just break right now and say, this is probably going to be a hard video for some people to hear. But again, I'm here to work with these people over here. And I'm here to get as many people from over here to over here as possible. So I'm willing to talk about the things that are going to lead to transformation and not just give the information and the generic tip. That is what this video is about. It's not meant to make anybody feel bad. But if the majority of people are over here, average caregiver, they're in the average, that's where most people are. It's so easy to spend so much time in the complaining of the thing we don't want. We put so much attention and time in our words and our energy and the hospital should do more, the doctor should do more, the insurance company should pay more, the community should do more. I agree with all of that. And I would think every single one of my care course members would agree with all of that too. But the difference is they think that they might spend some time talking about it, but they are spending more time talking about, okay, so none of that's happening right now. If complaining led to changing, I'd say just complain all day long and let all the change happen. But you can see that doesn't work because that's probably what so many people you know have been doing and probably you've been doing from time to time as well. It doesn't bring about the change that you want. It might make you feel good in the moment to complain a little bit, but we are not committed to complaining here. We are committed to changing. So what can you do? What do the successful caregivers do? Well, they start focusing on what can I change? What is in my control? What is in my power? Yes, I believe there should be more resources and all these things to help me, but since I can't get all of that over here, what can I do to get some of that information right now? They're doing what you're doing right now, which is on YouTube, watching a video, learning. This is your own time of watching this video. That's a trait of an extraordinary care blazer. That's not a trait of an average care blazer. An average person is not spending their own time and energy and resources learning about things that can help. So that is something to be doing and to do more of. The other thing is the average caregiver and the average person 
will put all of their eggs and all of their resources and all of their faith and hope in the healthcare system. The healthcare system should just take care of me. It's healthcare. They're supposed to do everything for me. That's who I rely on for all of my help in this process. But as you know, there's not very many healthcare providers who are certified or who are experts in dementia care. Even if they are, they don't have the time that many family members deserve to get all the answers. You often have to wait months and months to get that information. And quite frankly, if we're being honest here in America, at least we have more of a sick care system where they'll do all the things and they're wonderful people and they have great training and they're so smart, but they really fix things or help things after the person gets sick. They're not really in the business of preventing or improving. Successful care blazers, they are in the business of, can I prevent some of these negative side effects? Can I prevent some of these difficult dementia behaviors? What can I do to improve myself and to grow? I might not be at a clinical level of depression or a clinical level of anxiety. What can I do to help prevent it from getting that way? How can I cope with this stuff right now? So the people who are relying on the traditional healthcare system are the people who are going to get more of the average results that you are seeing when it comes to caring for somebody with dementia and the caregiver's health versus care blazers are going to say, okay, well, I think the healthcare system should be better. I will advocate and do what I can to help make it better. But in the meantime, I'm not going to sit around and wait for my health to go down the tube and wait for my relationship with my loved one with dementia to go down the tube and wait for my loved one's quality of life to continue to diminish while they try to get their act together. I'm going to do what I can right now. And sometimes that means they invest in a Sunday watching a YouTube video. Sometimes it means they join a specialized program like my care course, where they have access to Q and A's and support groups and community and live feedback and all kinds of lessons and programs. They might do that. Others might look to a support group and learn what's in my community that could be better. I'm doing a live talk to a Minnesota group in a couple of weeks. They're doing a dementia friendly community week. I'm going to be one of the speakers. So if you were in that neighborhood, you might choose, I'm going to go to that, or I'm going to learn from that. It was just a totally free event. There are things around. But when you just assume that the traditional healthcare system, especially when it comes to dementia care, is going to be everything you need to get through caregiving in the best way possible, you're going to be in the average caregiver group versus the traits of super successful caregivers who realize as well-meaning and as well-intentioned as the system may be, it just cannot serve the needs of what I want. I want to transform. This is not getting me that result right now. So that's just something to think about. Also, don't stop going to your healthcare doctors. Keep going. You need them. They serve a purpose. But when we're talking about super successful caregiving, we are not talking about just getting by, about just barely making it. We are talking about actually enjoying life again, enjoying your loved one again, doing things you never thought possible, going on vacation, having good memories and building good memories with your loved one, connecting with old friends, going out for coffee with somebody, things that right now seem impossible to you because we're stuck in the average caregiving group and the going to get our help in the average ways. We are talking right over here about we're doing things differently. And that's what somebody with traits of amazing, successful care blazers would be doing. They're going to do things differently. Now, on that note, the average is the most people, the super successful people, not as much. What does that mean? You're going to be alone. You're going to feel alone in some of the things you do. Now, obviously surround yourself with some great people inside my care course. We have support groups and communities and things like that. So they don't feel alone. But when you break away from the average, you are going to be different. You're going to be thinking different, acting different, believing different, showing up different. It's not going to be the same. So there is going to be another trait of successful care leaders is that they know it's going to be uncomfortable to make that change. It's uncomfortable to break away from the group and to do things differently. It's uncomfortable to not get wrapped up in the complaining and all the frustrations and just stick there and then coming back and saying, but actually, you know what? This is something I'm trying. This is something I'm working on. This is something I'm believing. This is something that I want. Like that's what that successful care blazer is going to do. I know and I believe fully in my heart Every single person who wants to be an extraordinary caregiver can be, but doing the ordinary things and doing the average things never gets you the extraordinary results. And so for you to have those successful results and show up as that successful caregiver, you are going to have to be willing to do the things that most caregivers are not doing. Another trait of an amazing successful care blazer is that they know that there is more work up front to get the long-term results and benefits. The average caregiver, the majority of people, let me tell you, this will not be the most popular video. I can say it right now. Like, I just know it's not gonna be a great video for the majority of people because the majority of people are in this average group and they're not looking for that transformation. They're not looking to be extraordinary because guess what? It's hard. And so traits of successful care blazers know that in the beginning, it feels harder to actually make that transformation and make that change than it is to just take the tip and take the trick and take the approach 
approach and try to say this thing and get the quick answer and try it with their loved one, that feels good in the moment because it's simple and it's quick and you can get it right there, but it doesn't lead to long lasting success. It's just good in that moment. Maybe if it works, a lot of times it doesn't, but then you have the next problem and the next problem. So super successful care blazers are willing to put in the work up front to do the deep thinking about how do I want to be thinking about this? How do I want to show up in this? How am I going to allow this to transform me? How would I think differently about this? They do that hard work up front and they know that they are not just looking for a simple trick or tip. They are not just looking for information to consume and to consume. They are looking for transformation to create the life they're wanting to create. And so successful care blazers know they're willing to wait that period of time. They're willing to do that hard work to get the ultimate result they want versus the quick tip and trick, which if you go on my YouTube, all the tips and tricks are the ones that get all the videos and that's great and that's fine and that's lovely. But if you're one of the few who's like, I want to transform, I want to do something different, then you have to also be willing. It's going to feel different. It's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel hard up front so that you can have it easier on the back end. Most people have it easier on the front end and then have it harder on the back end. Which one are you? And where do you want to be? And the average or most people who have all of those negative side effects of the anxiety and the depression and the sleep and the loneliness and the mortality rate, or do you want to start transforming and making a difference? It starts with you. It starts with what you're telling yourself, where you're putting your attention, it starts with where you're putting your control, the information you're consuming, going out and seeking out the resources and places that can help you versus putting all your faith into one place that you can already see. Just ask yourself how the last year or two years has been. You can already see it's not giving you that ultimate result. It's not getting you the ultimate transformation. So that's what I have for you. Kind of a bummer video, huh? Are you more inspired or are you more frustrated? Are you frustrated because you just want the quick tip or trick? Or are you frustrated that this is going to involve work? And here's the secret. The first approach where the average caregivers want all of the tips and tricks that involves work too. In fact, that is just as hard. It just feels easier up front. This, where it feels harder up front, is actually easier in the long run and will sustain more long-term success. Where are you? Of the traits you heard me mention in this video, what are you going to focus on and what are you going to do? And if you are somebody who wants to consider joining something like the care course, which by the way is talk about so not average, joining a private program online to connect with other care blazers and to work with me personally, that is so not normal. I'm going to say that right now. That is like not a normal thing most people do. But for the few who do, we are amazing. We love it. We experience that transformation week after week after week with all of the trainings and Q&As and support groups and programs that we do. But that's going to be a small group of people because those people are willing to do the work. So let me know what your thoughts are about this in terms of you probably don't want to be average. And I'm willing to say you are already above average because you are on YouTube watching videos. How do you keep moving in that right direction and not get sucked back? in. What did our parents say growing up? Just because everybody's doing it doesn't mean you should be either. Just because it is normal for caregiving doesn't mean we want to accept it. I don't know anybody who wants to accept the burnout, stressed out, depressed, anxious, sleepless caregiver. That is not a reality most people want to accept, yet they do. And so if we want to change that, we have to change what we do. We have to change the actions we take. Nobody else is going to come in and save you and make the changes that need to be changed except for you. That's how the transformation starts. And that's why over here, there's much fewer people than in the average. Hair Blazer, I am sending you so much love wherever you are and wherever you want to be. And I hope the series on traits of successful caregivers is helping you. Also, Nico gets a belly rub for every person who subscribes from this video. So if you haven't already, click the red subscribe button. It's totally free. And Nico says, thank you very much.